Shalom Akim, first and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who definitely rule well, who have taught us this truth. And mm -hmm. honors your citations to the elect document doing these works in sincerity and in truth. So I want to entitle this lesson, man. This place is cursed. And this place that I'm talking about is Babylon the Great. Okay. Uh, the United States of America. And yeah, man, this place is cursed. So I'm going to get into, you know, some definitions. All right, the blue letter to show that this place is cursed, man. And it's going to uh, it's going to go out in such fashion. So that's why we have to refrain ourselves from this world. You know, from this place. Uh, spiritually and mentally. So that it doesn't fall upon us when it does fall upon this place. Right, so now let me first start off. Oh. Okay, so lock you. So, uh, let's get into the definition. It says also cursed, under a curse, damned. Past particle ejected from curse, which is a ver verb. So it's the past particle from curse. And curse is a prayer that evil or harm befall one. Consignment of a person to an evil fate. See, now let's look up consignment real quick. The action of consigning or delivering something. So this place, this place here will be delivered to an evil fate. All right, let's, let me go back into that again real quick. Yep, hold off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or in other words, hold off. Straight to an evil fate, man. All right, it says of uncertain origin. All right, blah blah blah. Let me get some uh main key points. All right, so like, where was it? Uh, right here, right here, meaning the evil which has been invoked. Upon one that which causes severe trouble. Okay, and it was a uh, one more point. Yeah, all right, can't believe this is right here in Christian sense. Set of daily liturgical prayers extended to set of imprecations. As in a sentence of the great curse. Oh, yeah, so like that was it on this. Yeah, so pretty much a consignment of a person to an evil fate. And now we know that this place has an evil fate uh, uh, ahead of it. Okay, let's get into the definition of fate real quick. It says the development of events beyond a person's control. Regarded as determined by a supernatural power. So, yeah, the development of events. Like, you'll have, uh, let's say, in a good sense, right? You'll meet a girl or something. Oh, I think I think this was Common, the rapper Common. He made a song about how, uh, dang, can't remember, but pretty much. Let's just 
roughly paraphrase it, say he was he went to Africa for vacation and he met a girl there. And he, and he said, Wait, where, where you from? She's like, oh, I'm from Chicago. He's like, Well, I'm from Chicago too. What part of Chicago? And then it comes to find out that they're from the same damn project building. That would be like a development of events beyond a person's control that led them together. You know, so on a, on a, on a, on the left hand side, there's going to be a development of events beyond America's control. That's going to lead them into a, a very special judgment, man. A evil, a evil fate, as it says. Yeah, man. So this place is is, is, cur is cursed, rightfully. Right now, I want to get into um. Now I just looked up Genesis three and fifteen to get the definition of the word curse, which reads, "And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed." No, that's not it. Uh, verse 14, Genesis 3 and 14, and Yahweh Bashim al Shai, the Most High Power, said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Okay? Now we know that this is talking about the wicked, the wicked nation at that time. That that represents the serpent. So guess what? The serpent, this wicked nation, they are they are cursed. And everything is reincarnated, so they come back. And today's before they were known as a serpent. Okay, that serpent nation. Now Today they're they're known as the Edomites. Okay, well their actuality is yeah, they're known as the Edomites, but really today they're known as so-called white people. Okay, which are the Edomites. When you get into Genesis the third chapter, because they are more crafty and more wicked than any other uh, uh um nations at that time on the earth. Then when you go to Malachi one and four. It says that Esau Edom is the border of wickedness. Even in the New Testament, it calls them the throne of iniquity. They sit on a throne of wickedness. Going straight back to the serpent that was more subtle than any beast in the field. So because of these, because of these things, they are cursed. Right, so I'm just getting down to the definition of the word cursed to tie it back into how America is cursed from the Greek word here. Strong's H779. Arer. Arer. See? Arer. Right? Lay under a curse, which we know a curse is pretty much an evil fate. From the online etymology, or or you can use it in the sense of a prayer of evil, but when you put that prayer of evil upon somebody, they're destined to an evil fate. Okay, if you so happen to offend one of the Lord's little ones, okay, because the hopeful elect is sincere, man. The hopeful elect is humble. That's why they're the hopeful elect. That's why they're the elect because they're humble and they're sincere and 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 they do the things that please the Lord. And they're genuine. No. And they're the best thing to they're the closest thing to being good. So they're the best thing, closest thing to being perfect. In these vile, corrupt bodies that are made to go off. So for, for so for a hopeful elect to put a lay a curse upon you, you must have really, really fucked up, man. You know, people who say that in the world, yo, 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 he must have really fucked up. Yo, yo, he never get mad. Yo, you must have really did something, yo. I do never, I ain't never seen him mad one time, you know? So you must have really messed up 
for the whole full elect to, 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 to put that prayer of evil up, up upon you if you read it in that sense. But then once that done, once that happens, now you're sentenced to an evil fate. To an evil set of events leading up to your doom. Okay, so now getting into the lexicon of the word curse it says to abhor, to detest, and still more. Here's the point in the quotations after Job 3 and 8. Those who curse the day, a kind of enchanters who were supposed to render days unfortunate by their imp imp imprecations. See, but the point is to render days unfortunate by their imprecations. Right? So you have to render your days, you have to play your days out in unfortune. Okay, and miss like like they'll use it in the sentence. That's an, <laughs> you know, you got the synonym, you got the definitions, which we all learn to set up from the apostle and elder great millstone, man. You know, through the spring party out by Shai, you know, you get you get your definitions. And then you use it, you can also use it in sentences, man. Even like at the uh spelling bees. But anyway, yeah, people will say, uh, you know, what happened to him was unfortunate. And and and, and that means that pretty much it was sad. Something sad happened to him. To where it left him dis disappointed. You know, left him uh, uh heart heart struck. You know, like you could uh, get into a major uh, horrific accident or something, get your head clean, clean, uh, uh, taken off. And somebody would say, that's unfortunate. So you have to render their days unfortunate by their imprecations, which is what brings me to here, Babylon the Great. This place is rendering its days unfortunate. All right. Each each day is leading up to an unfortunate judgment, man. And each day becomes more and more unfortunate. Like the like the Lord said, every day that he bring his judgment to light. So now um let me jump over to uh was it because remember it said by their imprecations. And and if I'm not mistaken, imprecations, another word would just be by their actions. So because of their wicked actions, they have to render their days out unfortunate. Okay. Render out their days until they get that, that evil fate laid upon them. Which we know it, the spirit of Al Bashim as uh, the thermonuclear missiles bombarding this place, turning this place into a desert. You know how deep these goddamn oceans, these sea, uh, these lakes are. You got the Great Lakes up there and uh, near Chicago and in Milwaukee. You know you got Salt Lake City, Utah. You got the rivers, you got the Ohio River, you got the Mississippi River, you got the Delaware River. You know, hey, you got San Francisco, the bay over there. You know? You got the Finger Lakes, upstate New York. You know how much missiles, you know how crazy it's going to be when all the missiles hit to, to where it evaporates the water? And you get to the uh, sea level, to the uh, or to the floor level, ground level, to turn this place into a desert. That's great indignation that's coming upon this place, man. Why? Because this is wisdom of Solomon, two and twelve. One of the reasons why. Sometimes, man, you just bobbing for apples, man. You know you can't cover all the wickedness of this place. Sometimes you just be bobbing for apples, man. You just pick one out. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 12. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. And he is clean contrary to our doings. 
See? Now this is talking about the wicked, but Yahweh Shai himself said that ye are of your father the devil. And the less of your father ye will do. So even two thirds get thrown into this bracket. So they're all clean contrary to the righteous doings. We know that uh, righteousness pleases the Lord. Wickedness get, gets him upset. You know, the Lord is angry with the... Psalm 711, the Most High judges the righteous and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. See? The Most High gets angry at the wicked. This is what they don't want to teach in the, in the so-called Christian churches. You need to be worried if you're wicked, man. You need to be worried if you're wicked. Because the Most High is angry with you if you're wicked. It's not no cool thing. It's not a light thing to sit here and be wicked, man. To rap about adultery. To rap about murder. To rap about stealing. You know? Worshiping false gods. It ain't a cool thing to just do, man. The Most High is angry with you when you do that. And the scriptures say what? It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living power. I Meaning you don't want the Lord to start whipping your ass. Okay? It's one thing for the Lord to chastise you, but it's another thing for the Lord to to to, to want to fight you, so to speak. Chastisement is one thing. Because after the chastisement comes the growth. You know, and the patching up. The Lord knows how to patch us back up. Yeah, this is why I had to do that. See, because you can't be, do you know, Lord deals with us as a father. But when he want to fight you and hurt you, that's a different thing, man. And that's exactly what he wants to do when he's angry with you. And, he, and he's angry with this place. So therefore, what? This place is cursed. He already said it. It's already written in the scriptures, man. What's that? Revelation 17. And I'm going to end it off with this. You know, could have could have easily went and, you know, made it longer. But, uh, you know, so Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest with the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And this is the great whore that sat upon many waters. The different nations. This is the uh, uh, the melting pot, as they call it, and it's the whore because this is home of the slut walks. You know, home of the alphabet community, home of the uh, abortions. It says in the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, thee shall hate the whore, and shall make and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. What's the fire that those horns I mean the different EU nations? Okay, America's different allies. What's those horns? Uh, 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 how are those horns going to burn it with fire when they shoot those thermonuclear missiles over here? So therefore, this place is cursed, man. It, it's, it's destined to be let up. Okay, by, by evil events. Unto that great evil fate. Okay, that Yahweh Mashai has destined for it, which is to get burned by them thermonuclear missiles, man. So this place is cursed. And the people in it. So that's why we gotta flee this place. Flee. Spiritually. Spiritually flee and mentally flee. Um Yeah, it's too much. No, I'm talking about um, pretty much going about uh, going into fleeing this place, but uh, Micah two and ten should cover it anyhow. No, I think it might be in Revelation. Oh no, so lucky. Let me see some real quick.
<laughs> oh yeah, that, that is what I think of, but that's not um Oh yeah, Khan, Khan. Alright, Khan. Jeremiah 51 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Because if you don't flee out of the midst of Babylon, you will not be able. Yahweh Bashma Shai will not be able to deliver your soul. From the from the evil fate that's to come here, but if we flee out of this world, you know spiritually and mentally, and give up this place and just live and live, man, live for Yahweh Bashmal Shai. That is how Yahweh Bashmal Shai will be able to deliver our souls. Because be not cut off in her iniquities. Yes, our iniquity, our sins, won't be counted against us, man. It says, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. I mean, this place is cursed, man. So we have to flee out of the midst of this place to flee from that curse that's upon this place. Lord, well, this is edifying with that. I'm going to say Shalom.